Hello, for today's video lecture, we're going to be talking about point forces. So a point force is any force uh, with a single point of application. Uh, so these forces are represented by a, a single vector, uh, and each point force has three important characteristics. So we're going to be looking at a point force such as this one here. Uh, it's going to have a magnitude, so that is the 100 newtons in this case. It's going to have a direction, that's indicated by the direction of the vector over there, uh, and it's going to have a single point of application. Uh, so in this case, the point of application uh, is indicated by kind of the base of the vector over here. So though almost every force is actually applied over some area or volume, we approximate many forces as single point forces. We assume they are concentrated at a single point. Um, something like the tension in cables uh, so cables are rather thin. Uh, they do have some area. They do have uh, that force spread out over some area, but they are close enough to a point force that we're often going to approximate them as a single point force. Something like the friction force and this viol or the bow being drawn across this violin. Uh, so it's spread out over a small area, but we would assume that would be a friction force, uh, I assume a point friction force there. Something like gravity forces. So uh, this is one that we always are going to, or almost always are going to approximate. Uh, so gravity forces are by definition distributed forces, but we can approximate them as a single point force at the center of mass. Uh, and then finally, if we look at normal forces with relatively small contact patches, so we've got again got the gravity force here in the middle. Uh, but we also are going to have a normal force at each of the legs here. Uh, so I'd approximate each of those normal forces as a single point force. So point forces are represented by a single vector with both a magnitude and direction. Um, and in equations, uh, these values are denoted uh, as vectors by putting a small arrow, arrow over the variable. Uh, so this f uh, is indicating it is a force vector. Uh, if we do just the letter F, that would be the magnitude of the vector. So F without the arrow is just the magnitude. F with the arrow is the entire uh, force vector. All right, so to show magnitudes directions, we can use two different methods as well. So we can use the overall magnitude and show the direction with angles. Uh, or we can show the magnitude uh, in each component direction. So we can break the force down into x and y components or x, y, and z components if we go 3D. So in two dimensions, this is what that looks like. Uh, so a magnitude and direction, so 30 newtons at 30 degrees above the x-axis. Uh, or in component form, uh, we have x and y components. So same overall uh, vector here. Uh, and this 25.98 newtons would be fx, and 15 newtons would be fy. Uh, so we can either label them separately as fx and fy, fx equals 25.98, fy equals 15, uh, or these square brackets indicate uh, a vector that is in component form. So it's going to be x, y, and if we had a z component, it would be the z component after that. All right, so in three dimensions, we have uh, a magnitude and an angle, in this case a magnitude and two angles. Uh, so here I've got 30 degrees and I go up 45 degrees, so magnitude and two angles for the direction. Uh, or I have three component directions, so how far do I go in the, or what is the magnitude in the x, magnitude in the z, magnitude in the y, it would be the x, y, and z components in this case here. So this is the same vector in magnitude and direction and component form, same vector in magnitude and direction and component form. Uh, more on how to uh, go between these two forms can be found in appendix section 1.1. So we're going to talk about adding vectors. So if we want to add a number of ve uh, force vectors like we want to do uh, here, so say I've got F1, F2, F3, I want to sum up all of the forces so that the sum is equal to zero. Uh, well, how do I add vectors? Uh, and the short answer is the easiest way to do this is to split our vector equation into component equations. So we are going to get a sum of forces in the x is equal to zero equation and a sum of forces in the y is equal to zero uh, equation. So all of the x components, if I have it in component form, 
uh, the components are scalar values. They are no longer vectors. Uh, so if I find the x component of f1, x component of f2, x component of f3, those three magnitudes or those three components uh, should wind up being equal to zero if the body's in equilibrium. Same thing with the y component. So the y component of f1, the y component of f2, and the y component of f3, those three values should add up to be equal to zero if the sum of the forces is equal to zero, which happens when we have equilibrium. So more on how to add vectors can be found in appendix 1.2. Uh, that's all we've got for today's video lecture. Thank you for watching and I hope to see you again.